Just what did 2020 teach you? Well, as a fitness expert and a fitness enthusiast, we learned a lot about not only what can and will happen when it needs to in the fitness industry to step up and meet the demands of new changes in our world, but we learned at home the true value of fitness and what it means on a deeper level to our wellness. And we will see in the future what it means to our longevity and our health. I'm going to give you 10 things that we learned about menopause and exercise specifically in 2020. And this list, I probably could elaborate and add a few more, like a baker's dozen, if you will. I'll try and refrain from that. But I also started to do this the other day and realized that number six, and probably many of these, was something I really needed to elaborate on. So if you missed it, I will link to my podcast where I really isolated this one, number six, and I'll point it out when we get there. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns, and I share with you how to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset, often about how to eat and how to move so that you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in the second and better half. This top 10 list is one that I'm not going to read Letterman style. So I'm simply going to start at one and go to 10. Here we go. So number one, right off the bat, first things first, we learned in 2020 that exercise done right boosts your immunity. And we had it reviewed a lot of times, but I was first to jump on the bandwagon at the beginning of April, I want to say, doing several free trainings via spur of the moment, spontaneous and scheduled webinars, master classes, lives everywhere to point out that what you'd been taught that was a hangover really from the 80s in regards to moderate exercise being always the recommendation, is wrong. The truth is that moderate amounts of high-intensity exercise and lower-intensity exercise are better for your immune system than that middle-of-the-road zone three and what I call no-benefits zone kind of training. What we really need is to get breathless several times a week if not for a few minutes every day. And we also need that foundation of simply moving those times when you're going for a walk for the purpose often of offsetting the rest of the time during your life when we sit all too much. It is that it is the moderate level that you do your high intensity and your lower intensity exercise and or movement, respectively, that boost your immunity the most. Those two paired together are like your work and your recovery intervals. And done correctly, that's what will increase your resilience, not only to disease, but to stress. All right, number two, we learned that exercise supports or improves depression, feelings of anxiety, and mood. So best case scenario, you boost your mood, you're a happier person, and worst case, you have depression or anxiety, and you can improve the way you feel. Exercise will do that for you. And it's actually exercise of almost any kind will help, but the research is pretty clear when we're talking depression and anxiety as well, that they are most helped by high intensity exercise. Now that doesn't mean go high all the time. It means use the right dose, the right frequency and duration. So shorter duration 
use intermittently throughout your week on a regular basis. That's what it takes. And number three, strength training to muscular fatigue prevents the muscle losses associated with aging. Listen, if you're in our Flipping 50 community, like the tight-knit circle that we are, I shared yesterday a research study with my email subscribers all about the COVID-19 results they're in and what even research is showing that I've been speculating on all year long that anyone who is in midlife or older, who has not been moving as much because collectively as a population, no matter where you are during quarantines and lockdowns, we're not moving as much. We're not having to move to commute just even from the car to a business or to a restaurant or to those leisure activities that we're doing because we're not doing them quite so much the cut down or the reduction of just our daily movement, our weekly and monthly movement matters. And if you are potentially not exercising as much, you're no longer going to the gym, you're staying home safely. However, you haven't found an adequate substitute. By the way, I'm here for you. What are you doing? (laughs) That too is hurting your muscle and your bone loss, but it is the muscle loss that we're most worried about right now because those temporary or short-term losses we may be experiencing because of this last 12 months could have devastating long-term effects. The sooner you turn that bus around, my friend, the better. Now, that was true of men and women in midlife and older. As Per the study, here's what I will tell you about women in menopause. In your later stages, those last couple of years of perimenopause and your first couple of years of postmenopause, you have an accelerated loss of muscle due to that more dramatic drop in estrogen. And estrogen, although we hear often, and I've said often, testosterone and growth hormone are really a big play in your muscle. So is estrogen. It has a big protective factor. So when that starts to decline, you're more at risk for losing muscle and it's harder to gain muscle. And you're also more susceptible to the negative effects of stress and the stress hormone cortisol. Cortisol breaks down muscle. So it's not just that, yes, you need to nod and pay attention to that study, but you need to realize you are at the top of the class and you need to take it more seriously. It's much more difficult in the second half to get those muscle losses recovered and get them back. You can start to exercise at any point in your life, in your 70s, your 80s, your 90s, and still see benefit. But if you didn't lose the muscle in the first place, how much better would your life be? Tip number four, strength training with heavy weight prevents bone losses associated with aging. So there we have it, the flip side. Now, the two of them together, muscle loss and bone loss, create a devastating after effect. If you're weak, those muscles will make you much more prone to falling. Your coordination, your agility, your reaction skills, because we're all going to go down. We're all going to step on a slippery spot on the floor or a little bit of ice or snow and wobble just a little bit. The key is, will you fall down or will you be able to recover and right yourself? And if you do go down, Will your bones be too fragile and you will sustain a fracture or will you be able to recover because your bones are more dense and strong? Tip number five, strength training more than any form of cardio improves your fitness and longevity. So it's true. If you are debating 
whether you should do cardio today or do strength training today, if indeed it is a strength training day, meaning you've planned it, you've had two days since your last workout, meaning 72 hours free and clear, then it's time to do your strength training. At the end of your year, at the end of five years and 10 years in your life, being stronger will mean you've had more life in your years. Tip number six was the one that I just recently did a podcast episode on. And remember this, because I often, as I just did, shared with you the importance of strength training, I'm often asked this. Why don't we then do strength training more often if strength training is better for metabolism boosting and for health and longevity? Why don't we do it more often? Well, here's the answer. It's not the strength training activity, the session. It is the result of proper strength training and the proper recovery that increases your lean muscle, decreases your fat, and therefore improves your body composition. If you don't have all of those pieces, the proper strength training and the proper recovery between, you cannot have the proper results. There you have it. And to dive deeper into that response for one of our Flipping 50 members, I'll link to a very recent podcast in the show notes. So number seven, moving on, the right exercise is only a small but important part of the total movement that every woman needs in her day in order to impact her optimal health. And in every particular day, you may not have the exercise, but you absolutely should have the movement. The key is this, when you hear me say exercise less and eat more, what I mean by that is exercise less often than you are moving and move more. And here's where we've gotten it wrong since probably the mid eighties when I began to exercise as a 20 something co-ed overdoing it really exercising all the time and then going to classes, laying around, (laughs) relaxing, watching television, but not really moving a lot. Although I will say this, I was a student on a campus, a big campus, lived on one side of it. And why is it that all of your classes are always on the opposite side of campus, especially during the winter months? Doesn't it seem that's the case? All right. I digress. But the truth is, You know, really, I had the best of both as a 20 something because I did exercise a great deal and was walking across campus multiple times a day, either to and from class or to and from different clubs and organizations or to and from teaching part time uh, aerobics classes back in the day when you would carry your boom box. And that was a normal thing. Let's not bring those days back, shall we? Okay. Number eight, time was for many the biggest obstacle to exercise. And when commuting and distractions like social gatherings and entertaining and travel were removed Exercise activity increased for many who were very casual exercisers, barely exercising one or two times a day. Their exercise activity increased by 88% compared to their pre COVID or BC exercise activity level. And I will link to the podcast I did with the Run Repeat host who joined me where that survey was giving to over 10,000 people as they were keeping track of statistics of really what is happening during the pandemic. Number nine, online options for fitness increased dramatically 
as did the across the age span and space generations taking advantage of them. Listen, during this pandemic, I've heard of 90 something mothers of my friends getting themselves new computers, getting themselves online. Now, whether or not to exercise as much as to stay connected, I think that's pretty cool. But I do think that you and I, when we're 90, we'll still be online. We'll still be doing our exercise online if we so choose. And we'll be able to choose from spinning or yoga or Pilates or whatever it is we want. And that is the wave of the future that was born in this pandemic out of a force from nature, literally 60 and 70 somethings became far more comfortable with seeking out exercise options online. And for some of us, we're never going back. The convenience of it, the width and the breadth of the experts we have to choose from now far surpasses any need to have to go five miles away and choose from the pool of fitness instructors that might or might not be there for us. Number 10, the wave of dumbbells, weight equipment purchases that left shelves and even Amazon without weight training options created a short-term need to get creative with resistance equipment from soup cans to water bottles filled first with rocks and then sand and then water to backpacks or small pieces of luggage filled with books or sandbags from Home Depot. We got creative and we found solutions. Fortunately so, because in a moment of midlife, when you are more rapidly losing muscle and bone, that late stages of perimenopause, early postmenopause, abandoning a resistance training program now or not beginning one could have a devastating effect on disability in a decade. That is completely avoidable and unnecessary. I'm going to link from the show notes to other posts that you might like, those recent ones I discussed about why don't we strength train more, the top 10 at-home fitness equipment post that I posted very late, I believe in March, might have been early April, but still some of the hottest pieces of small fitness equipment that may be giving you more options for at home, given many of us are still open and then close and choosing to exercise safely at home instead of going out anyway, simply to save time. And whether or not you're keeping up with the statistics in 2020, I will link to that episode with Run Repeat uh, founder who joined me as well. And last but not least, This episode has been brought to you by the food flip. So of all things exercise, we learned, we also learned we are closer to the kitchen and closer to our pantries when we're in lockdown and quarantine. And that can either be a good thing or you can resort to comfort food and a little more wine than usual. And literally there was the quarantine 15. The food flip is a program that I offer a few times a year. Generally not at the same time. We offer strength training programs or start them because I believe in layering your habits and starting one thing, getting that going and under your belt before we had another. So if it's about time for you to get on track with What foods work for you now? How do you eat in this second half and getting a blueprint so that you can do that? 
with a little help from your friends. I'm here for you. And that is only open until Wednesday night. So if you're interested in joining us for February and happening to be listening to this early in the year, there you have it. If you come later to that link, there will be a notifications list and you can join that to hear next when we are offering it. There you have it, friends. I love hearing from you. So love to have your posts and comments below the show notes, or you're also welcome to join the Facebook group. We call it the Flipping 50 Insiders, Flipping 50 Insiders, where podcast listeners, YouTube channel subscribers, Flipping 50 TV episode viewers go to ask follow-up questions or ask new questions that you've got that may in the future end up being the topic of an episode. So look forward to connecting with you there. And what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.